Hello friends, my name is Marines and today I'll be talking about the next batch of books that I read. Book number five was The Women in the Window by A.J. Finn. This is an adult thriller in which a woman who has agoraphobia stays in her house and she spends her time kind of looking out the window at her neighbors and she sees something she thinks that is a crime. She thinks that somebody has been hurt. So she tries to tell people about it and kind of investigate it but nobody believes her because of her condition. She's a bit of an unreliable narrator and you're trying to figure out what happened to her that caused her to want to trap herself inside but also if what she saw was true. This was my book of the month pick for January 2018 and so it's been sitting on my shelf for about a year. I picked this up because the first two books that I read this year were The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and The Astonishing Color of After and both of those were book of the month books that I hadn't gotten to yet so I figured that I was kind of on a roll and I picked up another one, was in the mood for something that would really grip me and keep my attention so I turned to a thriller. I actually finished reading this not so long before the author, whose real name is Dan Mallory, was outed for being basically a con man. There was a large expose that was written about how he kind of conned his way to the top of like the publishing industry and allegedly did a lot of really weird and terrible things. It's a long read but it's super interesting and after reading it, it definitely kind of colored my experience with this book but I will try to give you to the best of my ability what I thought after I finished reading it just based on the book alone. I finished this pretty quickly because I wanted to know what happened at the end and that often happens with thrillers but I felt like there were two major plot twists in this story and they were both highly telegraphed but one was in a satisfying way that when you put the pieces together and it finally became and it was clear that what you thought was what was happening all along like it felt satisfying and then the other was not satisfying and unfortunately the unsatisfying one for me was the identity of the killer. I thought that there were it wasn't trying to telegraph in a way where you were supposed to put the pieces together it was just doing all of these things like it could never be that person and then it was that person and the character had like you know a never in a million years and I was just like okay this this is not fun. The author talks about pretty candidly about how he borrowed from like old movies and inspiration and loving old movies and putting a lot of that into the story and I think it shows and not that I'm a person that has a lot of knowledge about old and classic films or anything like that but there are a lot of things that are just kind of basic here and not in new or interesting ways. I don't hate on a trope but there has to be something either in the way that you write it, the vehicle, the characters that makes it so it feels like the trope is something new like we're not just getting the same thing over and over and this felt just fine. It was very basic. I knew where the story was going. I didn't particularly care for the character. It felt very much in line with some of the big blockbusters that we've had with female unreliable narrators at the head like Gone Girl and The Girl on the Train. And then this and this was just fine. For somebody who just kind of conned their way to where he was, the idea that he cribbed so much of this and took so many pieces of existing works and tried to put them together for his own thing and didn't entirely succeed in making it feel like a new thing. It's just really interesting and I gave this three stars when I finished it but in hindsight I'm like maybe I didn't like this as much because you know that's what happens. Book number six was The Ensemble by Aja Gable. I originally read this as an ebook and I borrowed it from my library. It was definitely a case of a cover buy or borrow. I was scrolling through what was currently available on Overdrive and this cover caught my eye and knowing very little nothing about it actually I just decided to give it a try and I ended up enjoying it so much that I bought my own physical copy. This is a story of four chamber musicians who form an ensemble and you just kind of follow their life as they play together and as they grow up together. It is very character focused which is why it's hard to give like a concrete plot but that's the gist of it is that these four people play together Together and grow up together. As I mentioned, I love this and it's for a number of reasons. One, I'm not personally a musician, but there was something so immersive about the way that Gable talks about chamber music. I felt like even though I didn't know specifically the terms, and I'm sure somebody who had knowledge would pick up on a lot here, but still even not knowing, I just felt like I was in the world, that I felt the passion for music and I understood how much their playing music together kind of fed the plot and the connections that they 
formed. The four main characters here are also flawed, but I just loved reading about them. And the author does a good job of balancing the flaws in her characters and building a lot of empathy for them and the problems that they face in growing up and in deciding a career and in having a career that isn't always lucrative and having to make tough decisions about that. The main relationships here are friendship. There is one romantic relationship that, that develops and you do get a little bit of romance at the edges with the other characters, but there was something so wonderful about seeing like the intimacy of a friendship and specifically about how music feeds that Im intimacy and the, the idea and the theme of harmony and discord is very present throughout the novel as you see it kind of trickle through their life and through their friendship and through their music. The entire time that I read this, I was just invested emotionally and it felt like being on the edge of being heartbroken and I wasn't sure why. I just constantly felt like something was going to happen to them and I was like preemptively like guarding myself against the hurt. It is not something that I would recommend universally for the reasons I've already mentioned and the type of novel that it is, but if you are ever in a mood to read about friendships, to read something that is more internal and more character focused, then I would highly recommend the ensemble. I gave this five out of five stars. Book number seven is Emma by Jane Austen. I read this for the very first time ever at the end of last year. You guys know that I love persuasion and I love Pride and Prejudice, so Austen is a an author that I consider a favorite and I obviously read again and again and again, but Emma was the last of her published novels that I had left to read, and this happens to be my best friend Nicole's favorite of Austen's novels. I picked it up last year and I had a pretty interesting reading experience with it, and I'll just mention before I get into all that that I picked it up again for a reread this year because we did a whole podcast episode about Emma and all of its adaptations. I will link that down in the description if you want to hear more conversation about Emma, about why Nicole considers it her favorite and about the cinematic masterpiece that is Clueless as an adaptation. I'm not even joking. That movie is amazing and watching it after having watched Emma was it just gave me a newfound appreciation for that whole story as an adaptation. The way that it took the original and really made smart decisions about how to make it more modern at the time and uh, just adapt it to a screenplay. It was absolutely wonderful. All of those feelings and more in the podcast episode. The first time that I read Emma, I got a portion of the way into the story and I was very much struggling with it. I didn't understand. I, I'm a person, I've discussed this before, like I get really bad secondhand embarrassment for characters. And so if characters are doing things that are like wrong decisions, or if they're being loud and wrong, as I like to call it, as Emma is often loud and wrong, it was just giving me a lot of like, not great feelings. And, and the story was doing it on purpose. It wasn't anything about the story or the craft, it just is the way that it was meant to be. So I was reading through it, I got through a portion, I was not liking Emma as a character, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be thinking about the story. So I stopped reading and I went to my best friend and just asked her why do you love Emma? What endears you to her as a main character and what is it about the story that makes it your favorite of Austen's stories? And she really talked about how Emma is loud and wrong but the place that it comes from is really more or less like just a really nice place. She cares for her family deeply, she cares for her friends and she thinks that she's doing good. She thinks that she's helping people even when she's actually hurting them. So reframing her actions in that way and kind of reading her in that way where she's coming from a place where she really wants to help those she loves. She thinks that that is like what she's supposed to be doing. You know, she's resigned herself to never marrying, to caring for her father forever. And she just figures that with her abilities, with her standings, with her resources, she can help others. But she doesn't realize that she's overstepping. She doesn't realize that she doesn't know what's best for everybody, things of that nature. So I actually went and I watched two of the Emma adaptations. So there is the one with Gwyneth Paltrow and there's a BBC adaptation. I watched both of those kind of pretty soon after one another and basically I spoiled myself. I knew how the story ended through watching the adaptations and then I came back and I read it again and I think that reframing it as I mentioned and also knowing the end was super useful for me as a person who loves spoilers and gets that kind of secondhand embarrassment because knowing the end 
I just, I felt like I knew what the story was getting at and it allowed me to enjoy the story. And it allowed me to pick up on a lot of clues that Austin kind of leaves you along the way before you know what's actually happening. I think that Emma gets a bad rap for being unlikable, but I know why it happens because it happens to me too. I think that this is some of the snarkiest and wittiest of Austin's narration, which is great. I don't like the main like romance at the heart of this as much as I like Lizzie and Darcy and and Anne and Wentworth. I think that this one has some things that are definitely more dated. I mean, all of Austin is dated. All of the concepts about being married off and all of that stuff, we know that that's dated. But this one in, in certain regards just had a little touch of that and Knightley is almost a little patronizing and fatherly at times. But I will say that I enjoy that the main theme of this romance is that you love somebody for who they are flaws and all. And Knightley is the only one who sees Emma's flaws but that almost means that he loves her the best of all. Like he, he gets the full package and he loves her even still. I gave this five out of five stars. Books eight and nine were The Tower of the Swallow and Lady of the Lake by Andrzej Sapkowski. And these are books six and seven of the Witcher series. I am done with the core novels of the Witcher series. It's laid out a little bit interestingly. So the series actually starts with two books that are collections of short stories. And then it has the four core full length novels, which I've now read all of those and there's one more book which is another collection of short stories that act in the timeline I think it actually comes in between books one and two so I'm I feel like I want to say like I'm done with the series I technically have one more book I've been working on the series for a couple of years now and I reread books one two and three multiple times before I ever made it to four and struggled struggled hard through five. Now having finished book six and seven, I am so confused about my feelings for this series and it's very difficult for me, a person who loves words and loves taking my feelings about books and expressing them, like it has been wild for me to not know how I feel about these books. A part of it is that it is a very long series and one that I read very spread out. So some of my experiences with these earlier books just happened so long ago that it's disconnected from my more recent struggles. The other portion of it is that it is some of my favorite characters and it had this beginning that endeared me to them and then the story kind of switches. At the very beginning and especially in those short stories you're introduced to Geralt who is a basically a monster hunter for hire. He's a mercenary and he's basically like genetically modified in order to fight these creatures in this world. And so you get that basis for this adult fantasy series and I just really loved the monster killing stuff. I loved this idea of him walking throughout the land of not really having a home and just taking jobs as he can and for being like unemotional and partial even though he's like the most emotional. <laughs> that's that's part of why I loved Geralt as a character and as you get into the core novels that really changes and you almost get no monster hunting and you get all of this political intrigue and all of this war between a lot of nations that you have to keep track of and a lot of characters that you have to keep track of. All that stuff is fine. It's not typically my favorite like that's not my favorite kind of story but it's also especially frustrating here because it wasn't what I was sold on and especially coming from somebody who came from the video games where there is more of that focus on going around and doing the monster hunting thing. I just, I don't know man, the direction just changed. But I kept with it because I wanted to finish the series and because I love the characters. I've mentioned Geralt. Ciri is also a, a wonderful amazing character and the relationship between Geralt and Ciri has been interesting to see develop. I love found families and there is definitely an essence of that here at the heart of the story. In book six I started to regain my love of it because there was a plot where Ciri was that I just, it went a little off the deep end for me but she got pulled out of that and it was starting to come to a place where I really appreciated it that carried into book seven and there was a moment so she starts traveling through times and worlds and so different pieces of mythology start getting pulled in and I was very like where are we going with this? Like I didn't understand. It started to come together again for me in the middle of book seven and then I was, I knew I wasn't gonna like the way it ended. I just started to really worry about the way it was gonna end and like investing all of this time and getting to something that I really didn't think was a satisfying payoff. And so now I'm left with all of these feelings about if I didn't like the way it ended because of like in-story reasons or did it just not match up to what I wanted 
wanted? Was it like my expectations that like ruined this? Or was it something that the story did? I don't know. And my brain keeps telling me that I have to like reread the series to really like parse this all out, but ain't nobody got time for that. Am I gonna reread the series? Yes, probably. Does anybody have time for that? No. Do I know how I feel about this thing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what to tell you. I need to take time to really process this, but the, the long and the short of it is this is a world that I enjoy with characters I really love. The women are never treated particularly well in the story. It's got that left over from like 90s high fantasy kind of thing. I didn't love the ending. I could care less about the war. <laughs> It's a mixed bag. I think the plan for me is to go back and finish the game. I think I'm almost done from where I was. I stopped pretty close to the end, I think, in order, because I was like, I can't do this out of order. I gotta go read. I finished reading, sort of. Uh, I'm gonna finish playing the game. Then I'm gonna go back and reread book one, read the last book that I haven't read, and reread book two, and then see where I am after that. That's it for me today. If you've read or would like to read any of the books I have mentioned, let's chat down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys soon. This and Persuasion and Jane Eyre, but, but it's going in the rotation.